the majority of our, our clients use our horses to make money for themselves. And so they require a specific type of horse. Uh, we, we have what we call show week, which is right at, that's the reason we bring our horses in in the springtime, is so that we can show them to our new clients and start our season, which is really the beginning of our work here for the horses. We show them what we've chosen for them, what we think is right for them, and then they preview them, make sure that they like them. And uh, we know them. We know all our horses. We know their personalities and their names, and we know them as individuals. So we kind of get in the, our heads what we think is going to work for each each different outfit that takes our horses. And then we hope that we were right. We try to tailor our horses' uh, temperament with our people's ability. For example, uh, somebody that has a lot of experience will, will give a horse that has a lot of experience. And somebody that's never ridden before will give a horse that has never been ridden. Keeping our horses broke isn't isn't much of an issue, except for in the spring. And the only way to to remind them that they're broke is to crawl on them and go, and let them do whatever they're going to do. Let them if they want to buck, let them buck. If they want to run off, let them run off. Get it out of their system before their people get here. And usually, and I know who they are. The ones that I know are going to screw up year after year after year. And I got a couple of horses that are twenty some years old and buck every spring. I know that they're probably too old to work very hard when they, if they're 23 or 4 years old and they don't buck anymore. I know there's something wrong. And uh, probably the the uh, uh, horses that we we don't buy much underneath 10 years old anymore. They're they're just there's not anybody that can can uh, work a young horse or will forgive him for screwing up for just being a horse. We don't do so much breaking of horses. We do retraining of horses more than anything, and that's the biggest challenge: is keeping your horses, keeping your horses not spoiled and not soured. And they do. They they learn all kinds of crazy things in in at their jobs from people that don't know horses, because that's the nature of the business. You're sending broke horses to people that don't know really how to ride, or because that they're they're dudes, and that's our business. Is we cater to them. So it's a special kind of horse, first thing, that'll that'll stay broke and that'll put up with beginners and then it's a it's a program of monitoring you know and you'll get a horse that for three years is perfect and then one year you'll get a report on the fourth year that this horse just hates his job and that's the way we interpret it but he's doing things like kicking other horses and biting and laying his ears back and not wanting to be saddled in the morning and we just know it's time to change his scenery and get him a different kind of job because he's bored. He's just like a person, you know. He's bored. So you just keep him broke by by making him happy with the job. And there are some horses that this isn't right for them. You and you know it too. They don't like it. They don't like dudes. They don't like they don't like it. And you find a different job for them where they can do what they like, or else you have a problem. Every year we have a horse drive. Um, our we. I guess it's been four years now. We got a pasture over there that's about 35 miles miles from the home ranch, and it's some of the best grass on top of a mountain, and uh, uh, stays open all winter. And it's good warm, good warm water runs through it, and uh, ridges stay blowed off, and it's excellent horse country. And we've got to get those horses from there to home for show week, where we show all these horses to their prospective employers for the summer, and. Uh, there's no way to get them home except truck them or drive them. Well, with 400 head, we're three or four days now getting them trucked, and it's uh, we thought thought that as much interest as we've had in in these horse drives, that we ought to uh, invite the public to go. It takes three days. We start out. We don't uh, we don't babysit anybody. We we they're they're an employee of, for for three days. They work for us. They get a horse from us and. Uh, they aren't uh, they aren't along just for the ride. We're dependent upon them to uh, to help us. They do pretty good. Most of the people we reckon we you know we recommend that uh, they have a lot of riding experience before they come here. They're not going to have a very good time because this stuff is wide open and there's canyons and cut banks and draws and and we're starting out on about 7,000 acres. We collect them into a 640 acre pasture and then drive them 30 miles in two days. And 
If you're just learning how to ride, that's not going to be all that enjoyable a trip for you. And we have some people fall off anyway. And we haven't had anybody get too badly hurt, you know, a little lost little hide or something. But uh, that's kind of to be expected, and that's probably going to happen every year. They're going to get on a horse. They're going to be a cowboy. They're not just playing it. They're going to be one for three days. They're going to get their ass chewed just like they would on a real outfit. And I get to do that. And it's as hard on me as it is, I'm not opposed to doing it just so they'll get the full experience. Thank you.